my background is I got my degree, at, well actually how I got my degree is even an interesting story. I'm one of those people, who, I was on the 36 year plan to graduate. Most of you say you're on the four or five year plan, I was on the 35 or 36 year. I went to the University of Minnesota, I was three credits short, I was offered a job. I was like, great, I'll get those three credits in summer school, I'll get those three credits at night school. Every year my father would say, when are you going to get those three credits? That was in 1971. In 1997, I did those three credits. <laughs> so it says Bachelors of Arts, 1997. The World Wide Web was launched to the general public in 1991. So none of us knew the, 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 how the internet was going to explode. And it has exploded. So here I am and I teach multimedia. And you guys want to know what multimedia is. And it's just a big issue about convergence. It is how we converge all the media. And what, you know, I just got back, I was in January, I was a NAPTE fellow, which is the National Association of Television Programming Executives, associations, I mean, and everybody, there were only three words on people's minds. These are all TV people. Their words were the internet, mobile, and time shifting. And that's what they were talking about on TV. They are going, okay, people are watching TV on the internet, people are watching TV on mobile devices, and people are not watching at the time that it's on TV. They're shifting the time they're watching it to another time. And they're saying, we don't know how we're going to make money. We don't know what the business models are. But we know we have to be associated with these new media multimedia people. So what students need to know is that you can't go out into the industry knowing one thing anymore. You've got to know two, three, four, or five things. And you have to know software. You absolutely have to know software. It's not good enough to know the app. That's, that, that's an editing piece of software. There's only so many people who actually get to use it. Uh, you need to know, and, and there's a lot of people who go, oh, I know Avid and Final Cut's going to be no good. I don't care which one you know, because I actually happen to be a big fan of Adobe Premiere. And anybody who used the new Adobe Premiere, it looks just like Final Cut. Because it's not about which software you edit on, it's what you do, it's the story you tell. And people get so involved in the software, you know, some, I hear people say, oh, I have to use an Avid to cut this. And I go, where's your story? And so what we do in, in the multimedia, we teach you a little bit about everything and try to focus on content and on production techniques. So, no, this is a big issue. What are we going to do with all this archiving? And that's, it's interesting because I'm actually working on a project right now with the Dakota County Historical Society, which is in Minnesota, to take a lot of their material and put it on the Internet. Because right now, museums are finding they have all the stuff and no one's coming. So what we're going to start doing, in, or we're hoping to do, is we're going to start scanning a lot of material of very specific genre. It's out of room schoolhouses. And we're going to scan all this stuff and we're going to start putting, building a website for it. I mean, I think your children won't know about physical stuff. Right. They're going to know about cyberspace stuff. But the thing is, we can't wait around for other people to do it. We got to fix it ourselves, and this is the time that if you have an idea, I mean, if you don't have a job, I mean, you guys are all going to school. But if you have an idea, start developing it. Because where do you think the wide, wild, world wide web came about? People got ideas and they started doing. Where do you think all these websites came about? All those failed websites that made a fortune, it's because someone got an idea and sold it to somebody else. Now, what do multimedia kids do? Everything. I have several kids who are working as editors who graduated. So people say, well, you have to be a film major to be an editor. No, you have to be a storyteller to be an editor. That's what you have to be. I have, a, I have one of my students is now working at Sony Image Works because all he ever wanted to do while he was here was composite videos, and that's what he, he started learning how to do. And he did a lot of courses in the art department, a lot of courses with us, and he's now at Sony Image Works. Uh, I have students working on DVDs. We, we, we are putting the tombstone up for DVDs now. Uh, I have students working on music stuff. I have students working in web companies. I have students working in, in video game companies. There is not like a job that you're going to get. It's the kind of thing that you want to do. And what we're just doing is we're giving you a lot of hands-on skills, some theory courses, some history courses. And those of you who have taken courses from me know that I really emphasize writing because you have to write no matter what you do. I don't really care what people major in. I do care that they get a degree. Because when I was working in the industry, I used to have hire people with every different kind of degrees. I mean, look at the best directors. Most of the best directors uh, don't have degrees in film and TV. 
or honorary ones. <laughs> they've honored <honorary. laughs> or they don't have degrees. Period. Now. But it's it's getting harder and harder not to, to work. I mean, it just seems that companies really want to know what your degree is. That becomes a faith thing. I have had three different careers. I was a journalist, a new media person, and now an educator. They're predicting six or seven for us, right? Yeah, they're predicting six careers? or seven. Career. Yeah, careers. Not job degrees. Or not, not jobs. Not, right. Careers. Careers. Oh, wow. Actually, it's six to nine. Uh, to Holy smokes. Right. That's career. Currently, to, to get in film, it seems like the best way to get experience for it's multimedia. You know, I mm -hmm. practice well, my film sure, by doing so. YouTube videos. Right, exactly. Well, what was it, two semesters ago, Nate had four people got accepted, and they rejected him and said, we're going to multimedia. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh right in the like, rim. What? And they said, well, what happened is everybody was in my office and said, we don't know if we should go film or multimedia. And I went, it's very simple. You do the film portfolio, because it gives you experience doing your portfolio. If you get accepted, you get to make a decision. If you get rejected, you go to multimedia. I said, but then if you get accepted, the decision is in your ball. Not in theirs. And you get to make the decision. What do you think of the future is of webisode type things like, you know, YouTube? So oh, see, this is like, the question they asked us you know, yesterday. YouTube came around like, what, 2004, 2005, something like that? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I can't imagine like 20 years from now, still people using YouTube. You know, and maybe I'm saying that because, you know, I can't remember websites 20 years ago. They didn't exist. They didn't exist. You know, so it's, it's so hard to say what the future of internet is. Will these websites like YouTube, these big gargantuan things, be lasting? Stand the test of time. Like I think longevity of individual websites is humongous. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean you're going you're gonna to see a lot more niche programming. I mean, look at television. Television is reinventing itself right now. They're trying to figure out who they are, just like radio did about 10 years ago. They had to figure out who they were and what they were about. And you know, media just keeps going through this reinventing process because they don't reinvent themselves, they die. The big thing is no one's watching TV shows at the time that they're airing. And most people aren't even watching TV on TV anymore. I mean, there was an article, Neil Nielsen just did a study, and they said more people are watching TV, but we had to read the study because, there, yeah, more people are watching TV programming, but they're not watching it on TV. So yeah. ratings are down, but viewing is up. Right. Because, you know, they're watching on the internet, and they're watching it on, on, on TiVo. Mo on TiVo I mean, not TiVo, <laughs> right. And Hulu. they're watching on, on, on Hulu, and they're watching on mobile, you know, mobile devices. So there's all these different ways that you can watch TV. You know, the whole issue of TV has much more competition just on TV, because at one point, when I was growing up, we had broadcast TV. We had the networks. That was it. Now you have how many cable channels do you have? I mean, it's mind-boggling. So, you know, the audience is, you know, they just, it just gets smaller and smaller for the shows they're making. And more and more people are watching all that stuff on, t on, on, on the internet. So the Nielsen study basically said that there are now three screens. Now, these guys know what I say about this all the time. I go, at some point, you're not going to have a TV set. You're not going to have video game consoles. What you're basically going to have is monitors sitting around your house and you're going to have some kind of a keyboard or some kind of controller, and you're going to have a server in your house. It's going to eventually all go into projection. My right. number and everything style. is going to be routed through the server. Video games will be routed through the server. TV shows will be routed through the server. Websites will be routed through the server. And you'll be sitting in the bedroom, and you'll say, I want to play, I want to play a game right now. And you just pick up the little controller, and you put the, you know, hit the thing. And you're not going to have these boxes all over, because you're going to have one server somewhere. All this is about making money. None of this is about just having fun. It's about making money. Mm. So you have to have a business model for this whole thing. I mean, like, it's like the guild. Mm -hmm. her, I mean, her business, I mean, she had to figure out how she was going to make money, and her, she did the first two episodes, <coughs> funded, and then she put a PayPal button on and said, if you like the guild, please donate. And she got money. Yeah. And people started giving her money. It wasn't, I mean, she, didn't, she wasn't enough to cover all her costs, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like she was self-funding everything. And then they got a lot of audience and stuff, and then Microsoft picked it up. You know, we always talk about this in my class, they go, Look at the past history and see what worked and what didn't work. Because if it didn't work, it didn't work for a reason. Find out why it didn't work and then take that why it didn't work and make it work the next time. People are looking at the old models as I have to have a TV show. And people are looking at the new models of how do I monetize what I have and get it on as many different channels as possible. Channels meaning not TV channels, but other any type of channels that you can mm -hmm. on the internet, on any mobile devices, anything. And that's how we're going to monetize it. Is 
You can no longer have something that's just as one thing. Yesterday we were talking about this, and I said the, one of the hardest things that is happening is that people have to figure out where they're making their money. And the problem is you have a webisode. We'll take a webisode. You have a webisode, and then you have product placement that you're making on. So you're making part of your revenue for product placement. Then you have a blog that you're using for that webisode, and that, and that blog has had advertising on or stuff, and then you have something else, and then you have stuff that you sell. So, you know, like, where do you track where the money's, you know, what's the, you know, the, the exact thing that's making you the most money? And one of the guys says, yeah, that's what our, our accounting department's having the hardest time figuring out, because we haven't quite, you know, right now we're pulling all the money in, but now we have to figure out how did they get from here to there in order to, that money to be spent.